Today on The Joy of Editing, we're going to get a look at the new Lens Blur Early Access and Lightroom Classic, and it can also be found in Adobe Camera Raw. We're going to check it out today. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'm in Lightroom Classic today and I want to take a look at the new Lens Blur Early Access. Let's check it out and see how well it works. Now, it is early access, meaning it is surely still in beta and I'm sure they're going to improve it. There's something that I think is really missing in it right now and I'll let you know that shortly, but let's get a look at it. You're going to find it in the develop panel and you're going to find it right here, Lens Blur. Now, if you click on early access, you're going to get this information. Just letting you know, this is an early access feature. They're still working on it and they'd love your feedback. And if you click right here, you can give them your feedback. For now, I'm just going to click OK. But that's important because, again, it is a work in progress, so it's not there yet. So bear that in mind as we check this out. Now, you'll notice right now, everything is grayed out here. What you need to do, see where it says apply, very simple. Click on this checkbox and it applies the initial amount of blur, which is set for 50 by default. This area here is for bokeh or bokeh, however you like to say it. Now, these buttons right here, when you click on them, they simulate your lens. Whenever you have your lens set to a certain f-stop, like an f2.8, you would have a wider aperture and you're going to get a certain look in light areas of the image here that are out of focus. That's the bokeh and you can see the shape of the lens diaphragm and you could simulate different types and that's what these buttons are for. And then you have this boost slider which is defaulted at 50. So anytime you see a light area here, you can see like the little bubbles back here, the bokeh or bokeh bubbles and then you'll get a shape of what the lens looks like. Well, let me just show you here real quick. Look at these light areas back here. In fact, let me go ahead and increase this. I wasn't going to show you this yet, but I will. I'm going to show it to you now. I'm going to bring this up to around 72. Watch these light areas back in here. I'm going to click the second button. Right now, you see the shape for the first button. Here's the second button. You see how we can see these little lines around here simulating different types of lenses. Here's another shape here, more of a hexagon looking shape. And if you hover over these, it'll tell you a five blade commonly seen in vintage lenses. So you could read some information about these as you hover over them. Here's another shape like a donut. Yeah, it kind of looks like a donut. And here's our last shape. This is called a cat eye, typically caused by optical vignetting in certain lenses. So this just simulates different lenses. You can play around with this and have some fun. I'm going to go back to the first one, and I think I'll pull this boost back some. I don't want to have that too out there in your face, but maybe somewhere right around 45 looks good. Now let's go down into this area, focal range. Now when you click apply, the lens blur filter picks the subject by default. However, you can also pick a point of focus. For instance, if you click on this button, it looks like a target here. What you can do is you see the little crosshatch. You can go ahead and click in the background here. Like if I click right here, you notice now my subject goes out of focus. Or I could click on my subject and now my subject comes back in focus. I could click on subject here, which will look a little bit different. You see that? In this case, I'm going to click the target and click right on my subject's face right here. I get a little extra blur back there. Now, this is your blur amount. Now, you don't want to go crazy here. If you get too much blur, it's going to look unnatural. For instance, if I drag this the whole way up, that doesn't look good. It looks phony and fake, right? You don't want that. So, you want to have a realistic amount here. So now it defaults at 50, which is a good starting point, but you may want to even pull that back a little bit to get a more realistic looking lens effect so it doesn't look artificial. So I'm going to pull that back a little bit. Now let's take a look at focal range. You see this box right here? It has handles on the right and left, and you can click these and drag these out on the right and the left. And here's a little tip. If you hold your option or alt key down and click, let me click in the center of this box. You see the light areas? That is the area in focus. Now, I'm holding the older option key down, but watch as I drag this across. You can see how the light area is moving back. The light area is the area that's in focus. You see that? Now I'm way back to the background. Now when I release that, you can see our subject is out of focus now, right? And the background is starting to come in focus. Now, if I hold the older option key down again, I'm going to click this box and I'm going to drag it. 
And again, the light areas will be the areas in focus. Now, you notice when I keep moving to the left, the girl is turning orange, so she's out of focus there. But as soon as I drag this whole box to the right, as soon as she turns lighter, I know she's in focus right there. All right. So now I can make the area in front of her more in focus if I take this edge and drag this to the left. I can widen the area of focus by taking this slider and dragging it to the right like this. And watch the image as I move it. You see different areas are coming in focus as I move this. If I take it the whole way over, everything is just normal. There's nothing out of focus other than how the original image looked. But if I start to drag this back, and again, if I hold the Option or Alt key down as I do that, you can visualize the light areas will be the areas in focus. But see how it's coming closer to my subject? And I want it to come right up here. Now it turns orange, so I'm going to back it off to the right a little bit to maybe right about there. So my subject's in focus, and I have a real nice, natural, out-of-focus background. Now you know how to adjust the focal range. And now let's look at this next section called Refine. Now this is closed by default. You see this little triangle here. Give that a click. And then you have a couple tools in here. You have Focus and Blur. Let's call these brushes. This is a focus brush and a blur brush. Because what I want to do is zoom in on to the subject here. And you can see like right here, it's messed up an area right here, but we can fix that. We can use a blur brush and blur that out as well as this area right here. We can fix that here. It's missed a little bit on the edge here. Again, this is early access. They have more work to do on this, so hopefully this will get better. And also, if I shut off apply, you can see it's missed some of her hair here. I'd have a hard time getting those flyaway hairs there. But if I turn this back on, I think it looks believable enough. You know, I could try to pull some of this other hair back in here uh, by grabbing, say, like this focus brush and with a nice small brush. Now, you can use your left and right bracket keys to adjust this brush size. But let me see if I can just paint through here and see. I can bring some of that hair back in there. You see that? It's not going to be perfect, but... I just need it, need it to look believable. Now, right there. Now, I overshot that a little bit. So now I could go and grab a blur brush by clicking on it. And then I can come right here and just paint that off. You see that? Now, also, there's a plus here. You can add a new brush, okay? Because once you get a brush, you can, re you can adjust the amount of the either focus, if you're selecting focus, or right now I'm on blur, like I can adjust the amount of that blur in that little area right there. But let's go ahead and add a new brush. I'm going to click the plus here because I want to work in the blur over here now. So what I'll do is I'm going to paint right over here. And I have a nice small brush here. I got to be careful here. See, I got that. And also this area right here, I'm just going to come up here and paint along the edge. I'm trying to be very careful here. But now I can take this amount, and if I drag it to the right, that'll get super blurry. If I take it to the left, it'll lose its blur. So then I can just slowly adjust this till it starts to blend, until it looks really natural. And I think somewhere like right about there looks pretty good. So I was able to fix that area up. But that's what these brushes are for, because you're never going to get a perfect mask. It's really hard to, but if you do, you're one of the fortunate lucky ones. But every now and then, you're going to have to go and do little touch-ups here. I went ahead and zoomed into 400%. And the reason I did is because what I want you to notice is, if you look at the subject, the in-focus subject, her face, the shirt, there's a little bit of grain there. But you'll notice in the background, the out-of-focus area, there is no grain whatsoever. So that looks very unnatural and artificial. So this is something Adobe need to address in this lens blur tool. They need to add some kind of a way to add some grain or noise to the background just so we can make the image look believable. At this point, we don't have that, but I'm sure that will be coming. I just wanted to point that out. I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out. I almost forgot to show you visualize depth. Now this works off of a depth map, okay? And if you want to see what that depth map looks like, click on this checkbox. And all that really shows you, these are the different focal ranges, okay? Like the orange area is an area of focus, as well as the purple areas, 
and these darker areas in the background. So that's what the actual depth map looks like. So I'm just going to go ahead and uncheck that. I just forgot to show you that. I have one more image and then we'll be done. And that's this flower image. I'm really into flower photography and I love flower images when you get some nice blur in the background. Now this image, I wish there was a little more blur. This is just a stock image, by the way. They're both stock images. I would like to have most of the attention on this flower here. It's just too busy right now and some blur can really help out. So let's go ahead, lens blur. Let's go ahead and click apply and see what we get. Now we get a little bit of blur here but not enough in my opinion. So let's try this. Let me hold my alter option key down and I'm going to take the right side of this box and start to drag it to the left as I hold the alter option key down. Remember the light areas are the areas in focus. So notice when I start to move this to the left, see how this flower is really coming into focus here. Let me get back on it here. Yeah, maybe something like that. I think it's pretty good. And now let me take the blur amount and pull that up a little bit more. I don't want to go too crazy, but maybe right about here. This flower bothers me. I wish it was a little bit out of focus. So let's click on blur and use the blur brush. Now this is a size slider. So you can drag this to the right and left to make it larger, or you could use your right or left bracket keys to do that. You can adjust the feathering here. I'm going to get a little bit smaller brush to maybe right around there. And I have my flow at hundred percent. And what I want to do is just blur this out a little bit here, right up into here. I want it to look natural, so I'm going to take my time here. So maybe right like that. And now I can take this amount slider, and if I drag this to the left, I want to put that a little bit into focus, not much, but I want to take it slightly out of focus. See how I can adjust it and just apply as much as I want. And I think right there looks good. Now this petal here is bothering me, so I could take it out of focus. So let's click the plus and grab another brush. And let me just paint over on this just to knock it out of focus here. By the way, there is an auto mask on the brush too, which can be kind of nice. And I think I'm going to go over here and slightly take this area out of focus, like right there. I'm going to make my brush smaller with a bracket key. And I just want to paint on this petal right here just a little wee bit and knock that out of focus. And I'll just even come up into here. You know what? I think I'm going to increase the blur amount a little bit. I think this image can take it. So I'm going to drag this slider to the right. I don't know, to maybe right about there. Now let me uncheck apply. So here's before and here is after. I love flower images when the background goes out of focus, which this lens blur filter can really simulate like as if you had a really expensive prime lens shot with a large aperture so you get that really nice shallow depth of field. So I'm super excited about this lens blur filter. I can't wait till it's totally right the way Adobe wants it to be. And I hope it's perfect. I hope it gets grain coming to it. I hope it does better with its selections and so on, but hopefully it will improve. It's not quite there yet, but remember it still is early access and they are working on it. Don't forget to give them your feedback and let them know. Hey, let me know in the comments section below what you think of this new lens blur filter. I'd really love to hear your thoughts on it. Hey, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, don't forget to give it a like share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, and don't forget to click all so you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.